Hello, Bishop Wooded here. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. And what a day this is. First of all, my friends, this is the day that the Lord has made. And we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. And I want to invite you to join me tonight at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. We're going to study the scriptures together. And listen, we're going back to pushing back against the enemy. Uh, Alice uh, Bailey and her group and their wickedness. I want to reveal some more of what's going on. As a matter of fact, you're going to be blessed tonight. And to the, to the members and to the viewers, I have a very, 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 very important announcement at the end of the service. You don't want to hear this secondhand. You want to hear it from me. You want to hear it live. And you want to be here to hear it for yourself. So please meet me here tonight at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. I got a clip that I'm, I'm about to show you of yet another interview that we did concerning HB2. Can you believe it? We are still talking about the common sense legislation that, that was passed by our governor that basically, my friends, protects women and children. I have right here HB2 in its entirety in my hand. And I also have here uh, our, the governor's executive order that he did on uh, on uh, I think it was Monday or Tuesday Tuesday of this week and uh, there's a lot of concern about the governor's executive order I like what Dr. Mark Creech Reverend Mark Creech executive director of the Christian Action League said in response to the governor's uh, executive order and he said this we are deeply appreciative for the fact that the governor's executive order maintains basic expectations of privacy people have when using the restroom the executive order also keeps intact the right of private businesses to live and work according to their peaceful expressed beliefs for his firm stance on these two matters, we commend the governor and call upon him to remain strong. And I tell you, Governor McCurry, please stay strong. We do have a concern. However, expanding the state's employment policies to include sexual orientation and gender identity via executive order was not something with which we can agree. Uh, effective orders are not a pro executive orders are not a proper vehicle for such uh, changes, and I agree with the, with Dr. Creech here because one of the reasons we agree with him is that I don't know the definition of the word sexual orientation. I mean, how broad is that term? One man's sexual orientation may be to have sex with a member of the op opposite sex. Another man's sexual orientation may be to have sex with a member of the same sex. Another man's sexual orientation may be to have sex with children or with animals or with objects. Do you see what I'm getting at? There's no limit to what uh, the word sexual orientation mean, it, it means it has not been defined and also to add a uh, gender identity which is a floating thing and it, and it, and it puts uh, creates a hardship on, on, on businesses uh, Dr. Creech said this he said it is the response to the governor's executive order by the left that should cause great consternation by our state's citizens, you will note that they have no live and let live approach. His point is, in the governor's attempt to appease these people, uh, they're marching now. There is a winner-take-all mentality that the people on the left have. They don't want peaceful coexistence with the rest of us. They want to dominate us. They want what they want. They will stop at nothing until grown, perverted men uh, have access to bathrooms, changing rooms, locker rooms, and things like that with women and children. And, and you got to be perverted to even want that. And my friends, as I have said before, let's just be honest. A transgendered woman is a man. 
and a transgender man is a woman. The truth is you cannot change your gender. It is not something that can be changed. So uh, I'm going to go to an interview that we did uh, with ABC News just on yesterday, and I'll join you at the conclusion of this uh, interview. Today, I, I just want to get into because I mean, some things have changed since right. Monday, right? Um, and just trying to get your take on that since you yeah. know, an executive With order the has the governor's been signed. executive order, yeah, yeah. I mean, well, first and foremost, I mean. With that executive order, he's still holding his position in terms of who he believes should go where. Mm -hmm. um, do you think the actions that he took? You know, what are your thoughts on the actions that he took in that executive order? Because the change, he, he's it would rewrite one of the rules that was attached to HB two. Uh, my position is first of all, we're glad that the governor up uphold what for us is the heart of HB two. Uh, the people who oppose HB2, these, these leftists will stop at nothing to get men in the bathrooms with little children. And I understand how you can get legislation right or maybe go a little too far or not far enough when trying to accommodate what is, in my uh, view, uh, lunacy. We, 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 we're actually having a legal, moral argument on whether or not a man who is indeed a man in every way should be allowed to be in the locker rooms or bathrooms or, or any place where women collect themselves privately in various states of undress. So that is actually a issue in our state. So in trying to get the policy right, and trying to please everyone, and then there are those who pressure uh, corporations to leave our state, or corporations put pressure on the governor, and many of the personalities who are talking has never even read the law, and it sounds like North Carolina all of a sudden has become a state that is bigoted toward uh, 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 the LBGT. Q or LGBTQ community, which is simply not the case. Um, North Carolina is a great state and it's in the top five to do business. Uh, uh, people uh, just the other day when they had the, uh, the, uh, uh, the playoffs, the basket, basketball uh, the finals, they were in Houston whose uh, laws are similar to ours. So with what the governor has, has done, we uh, appreciate the governor for upholding the heart of HB2. Uh, we always have some concerns about uh, using language like uh, uh, um, sexual orientation because that's a broad term. What does that mean? One man's sexual orientation is to be uh, with a, a member of the opposite sex. Someone else's sexual orientation is to be with a member of the same sex, whereas another person's sexual orientation may be to be with an animal or a child. And so since it's vague and we don't know what it means, we're always concerned about that. But we're, we're glad that the governor up, uphold the parts of HB2 that he did uh, reaffirm. Um, so the heart of HB2 is that people use the restroom that is associated with their birth certificate, right? Birth and, and, and biology. It's, 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 it is so um, plain that you have to admit it is difficult... To, to, to see why so much attention has been given to this. We don't want men in restrooms with women and children and old, old women. And we don't want uh, 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 men, women in men's rooms. We, we just, we don't think that that's a good idea. It has never been a good idea. And even if it is a man who is dressed, as we've said before, like a woman, but his chromosomes say he's a man. His biology says he's a man. His D DNA says he's a man. I mean, when all those things line, line up, he's a man. We don't think that it's a good idea that, that that kind of, not person, but behavior be codified into law. HB2 is not against persons. It's against a certain behavior that has been considered deviant and outside the norm 
And that behavior is men going into bathrooms and locker rooms and dressing rooms where women, uh, that, that's, that's designated for women. It is a behavior. Now, they say that we're, we are discriminating against the LGBT community. We're, we are discriminating, which is true, but we're discriminating against bad behavior. And it's bad behavior, it's bad public policy for men to be allowed to use the, the restroom with women and children. I do want to ask you, because there is a, um, a transgender woman that I met today. She went through transition 13 years ago. She had a birth certificate change. So legally, she is allowed to go into a, a, a lady's room. Now, because of HB2, she is legally obliged to go into that restroom. What are your thoughts on that? I think that's, that's terrible because, you know, I, I respect you. You got you to do your job. But the she that you're talking about is a he. You can't change your gender. You can't change your origin. He is a man who has been altered to perhaps sort of, kind of appear to be a woman. But he is a man. And what has happened is they we, we talk about it like uh, we, we're talking about something that's really not what it is. It's a charade. Oh, God. <laughs> you make me laugh sometimes. <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, do you think that there should be some sort of, um, you know, I guess one thing that the transgender individual also I spoke with today also brought up was that, you know, um, in terms of ID and identification, you know, you can use your ID to vote, but now... You know, you have to use it just to use a restroom. That's kind of crazy in itself. Yeah, well, she's the she or he is the one that made it an issue. It is amazing that he would argue that is crazy when he tried to change his identity. Now, the reason why you have to use a driver's license to confirm identity is it is to make sure the person is whom they claim to be on their birth certificate on the social security number, everything that says heretofore that that individual is who they are, the driver's license confirmed that. Now, in his case, he has tried to change himself into a woman, of all things. So he can't make the, the argument he's making because his license now is lying. Because no matter what he does, he had add hair extensions, do whatever you want. If it's ever a situation where his DNA has got to be swung, any, anything like that has got to take place, I guarantee you it's going to come up male. That's because he's a man. And what we're grappling with in society, rather than dealing with this for the mental illness that it is, and I know what people will say about that, but you know, political correctness is not my, 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 my thing. Love is, but being truthful is. As we try to grapple with things that a society cannot grapple with, how do you have a society and, and come up with law and public policy and rules that accommodate people trying to fundamentally change who they are? When everybody knows that when it's all said and done, Everybody knows that Bruce Jenner is still Bruce Jenner. Caitlyn Jenner is a facade. It's a charade. It's a game. Bruce admits himself that he's still sexually attracted to women. Isn't that amazing? So he goes through all of that and, uh, and he ends up being a lesbian. Well, as always, Reverend. <laughs> You have me laughing there. Every time I interview him, I start laughing. It all gets, it all gets very confusing. Yeah. That's because of no, the it's not confusing. He's <laughs> funny. No, no, I mean, but like you talking, like you just said. Yeah. He became a woman, but he's still attracted to women. So he goes through all that to become a lesbian. You sneak on right to where you are there. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. You're a firecracker. A firecracker. Oh my gosh. 
So if, I don't know if I'm giving you anything that you can use. I think you definitely <laughs> did. But you kind of understand, I mean, you had said something in there where you said it is discriminatory. Yeah. I mean, that's something that... Um, but please add, it's discriminatory against behavior. Now, Those are your words, not right, mine. Right, right, right. And that's and that's what I said, mm -hmm. and that's what I want you to. What I'm asking you to do. I'm going to use that. Piece. Yeah, <laughs> it is. But it's discriminatory against behavior, a behavior that's deemed out of the norm and deviant, and that is the behavior of men entering the, the ladies' restroom. I had a lady tell me Sunday. She said to me, she says, Pastor, all we women know, we know all that we do in the restroom. We know how we help each other, what we do, what goes on in there. Now I don't have a clue. But she says, it just wouldn't work with men being allowed to enter in there. And with you being a woman, and, and it's evident, it's evident that you are a factory-made woman. Not, not laboratory-made, <laughs> factory-made job. Mean. You see what I'm saying? Come from, God did that. No one in uh, these uh, laboratories can do that kind of work. Uh, you know that when you are in a restroom with, with ladies, it's your world, it's your, it's, your, it's your domain, the ladies. And what goes on in there, all women share the understanding of what was, what's happening there. And what would destroy the whole thing, the continuity, the camaraderie, the, the sense of pri privacy, is for a man dressed any kind of way to walk in there and begin to be in there on a regular basis. And we don't want the Seattle thing, you know. And what he passed a similar measure, and the guy goes in to a, a girl's locker room. They call the police, and he tells the police, "I have a right to be here." And do you know they couldn't put him up? There's a video. That, have you heard about this video? Mm -hmm. I mean, I just saw it today. Um, it's a sketch. It was put out by the LGBT community, but it kind of it, it kind of shows that like there's now bouncer who's outside of the bathroom checking IDs. Yeah. Um, I mean, nothing like that is, I would assume, going to happen. Yeah. I mean, it'd be way too expensive to put a bouncer mm -hmm. outside of every bathroom. But I think it speaks to what you're but, saying. But, but what was funny is, they'll make that kind of commercial and they'll laugh at us. But they live in such a manner where it wouldn't be a bad idea to put a bouncer in front of the bathroom to make sure that ladies like you who goes in there would be protected from predators like me who would look at you and find you to be beautiful, sexually attractive, and you know what? I'm crazy, right? So I wanna I wanna I wanna get you. You know what I got all I gotta do? Throw a wig on and say I'm a female just to get you in there when you're in a vulnerable position using the ladies' room. Now it makes taking advantage of you so much easier because you, you're already in a degree of undress. And I'm a, I'm, keep in mind, I'm a man, and I'm a very strong man. You're a petite lady. You may be strong, I guarantee you're not stronger than I am. And if you're in a bathroom with closed doors, let's say we're at a club where bouncers are. The music is blasting, it's booming. And you're in there with me, I put a chair up to the door, and now I have evil intentions towards you. What are you going to do? You're going to fight back, but you're not going to win. And if you do, you don't come out unscathed. Whether you get raped or not, you don't come out unscathed. And if nothing happens, there is an incident. Something happens. If I'm in there and you're in there and all of a sudden you see me stand there and I pull up my dress and I use the commode uh, like, like guys use the journal and you're next door and, and this is going on, you know what? Something just happened. Something happened to you. Because you're going to be uneasy. And, and you don't know me, okay? You don't know who I am. I'm just this big guy in here. You, your, your body is going to shut down. You're going to shake. Your natural instincts that you're in danger are going to kick in because you're in there with a fool. Everything about me says I'm a man. A crazy guy. Everything about me says I'm a man but this voice. And you don't have, you have no way of knowing what so I'm just, trying to So it just, and I do want to ask you again because. Sure. You said in regards to that video, they're making fun, but right. they there there there's there's some validity to the to the message. Of course, yeah, but it, but the validity they created it by coming up with this notion that you can change your gender, which is a lie, which is one. Of, and, and and you know what? I feel sorry for the people who go through the gender reassignment surgery 
because one of the biggest, biggest shams ever uh, uh, committed on people is to make a human being think that a cut here and a snippet there and you move a little fat from here to there physically actually changes who you are. Then when people come out of that, there are many people, I guess coming here in June, I'll call you when he comes, who went through the full gender reassignment surgery. Full. The, the full surgery that cannot be uh, reversed. And what's been cut away is gone forever. Only to return back in his mind to what what and who he is biologically. Would love to come for that. Yeah, he's coming. He's coming. I have his book right here on my desk. He's coming, and uh, and he wrote a book about it, and what 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 he went through, and many others just like him, listening to a voice that says he's a woman, until the surgery was was done. The next day, guess what? The voice changes. So, oh no, you're a man. So now there's this internal battle going that goes on. He's a guy one day, he's a girl the next day. Now my question to you and to all of those, uh, to others is, how do you come up with a public policy that accommodates such? I can be a man today and a woman tomorrow and I want the general public to respond to me. How selfish can one be? You know, it's that sickness. So the guy's coming, and, 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 and guess what? He has a wife. And he's coming. He's going to speak to our church. All right. Make sure you leave me your car. But the, the, there's a lot that go on in, in the community. And you know Dr. McHugh of uh, John Hopkins, uh, this great man. And he, he's not a uh, member of our church. He's not influenced by me at all. He's never met me. I never met him. But he declared that at John Hopkins, he stopped performing gender reassignment surgery. Hey, you just saw the interview. What do you think? Did I get it right? Did, uh, I, I believe that I did because we're standing for the God of the Bible. I mentioned uh, the people on the left, the HRC, the Human Rights Campaign, which is represented by 1.5 million members and supporters nationwide of the lesbian, homosexual, bisexual, and it is a lesbian, homosexual, transsexual, bisexual civil rights movement. And what these people do, they go to businesses and they say, hey, have you heard about HB2? Do you go along with it? And if the corporation or the business says, yes, we don't have a problem with it, then they will boycott that corporation, boycott that business, uh, uh, affect their ways to do business. And many businesses, they don't want to fight these kind of battles. They just want to make money. And what they do is cave. But uh, every business that cave on North Carolina, you're caving at your own peril. We're ranked number two, rank number, we're always in the top five to do business of the states in America. Uh, North Carolina is in the, in the top five, and uh, for blacks, North Carolina is, is ranked number two, at, at the second state ranked number two as the second best state in the United States for African Americans. We're second only to Atlanta. But the tech tactics that these people use, you can find it in this book that I have here, my friends. It's called Rules for Radicals. I recommend that you get it. I don't want to sell this book, but I do need to sell it. Um, not that I'm getting anything for it. I don't want to give Saul Alinsky uh, any, any, make any money for him. But let me, let me say this. He's the man who, who has given these people their tactics and, and have shown them how to bring in organized chaos and anarchy. And just let me read who he dedicates his book to. He said, lest we forget at least uh, an over-the-shoulder acknowledgement to the very first radical from all legends, mythology, and history, uh, the first radical known to man who rebelled against the establishment and did it so effectively that he at least won his own kingdom. And he dedicates the book to the man that he's talking about, Lucifer. So my friends, this is demonic activity that you see going on. And also, I want you to get this book. I do want you to get this one. This book is written by Walt Heyer. The name of the book is Trading My Sorrows. And Walt Heyer is a man who had the total gender reassignment surgery.
He had everything done. And he says this in his book. It was becoming very clear that the surgery they call ch a sex change or gender reassignment is not a sex change or gender reassignment at all, but uh, a means to living out a masquerade through the destruction of perfectly good functioning organs. He went through it. And guess what? Today, he lives as a man because he is a man. He's always been a man. And my friends, he's married. And we're working on getting him here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. We'll give you more about that. Remember, I have an important announcement tonight. We're going to jump in the word. I'll see you. God bless.